Anh này Hi, I'll be on in just a minute, so um, give me a minute. Um, it appears that um, on the other show where I am on, you know, I haven't um, been given the mic yet, so just a minute. Okay, it's coming. Hello, <laughs> is anybody out there? It is my time, and uh, this is Sandra Bishop. Are you guys out there? Can you hear me? Oh, hey, Doug. Okay, so um, I am all set up, I do believe, and I am so happy to be here, so happy to be with you, and um, just, just, you know, it's... I am always like in such a upbeat mood whenever I get a chance to share with you here on ACMI Gather. This is Sandra Bishop, as you probably know, and um, I am this time around. It looks like I've got it all going on on Ustream as well. So I am not only here on Pal Talk on ACMI Gather, but I am also on Ustream. Um, at least that is um, what I do believe <laughs> as well. And so I'm sitting here, um, I'm back in my usual spot. Last week I was over at a, um, a girlfriend's house and I got a chance to record the show from right there where she was or right there in her house since I was house sitting. Today I am back over here in my normal spot and, um, you know, just so much stuff going on. I've been running all day or working all day doing all the stuff that I had to do and just, and now I'm here. Isn't that fabulous? 
So, um, you know, thanks. Um, that was Mike, I guess, that was just Owen. And um, we're all, you know, we're all doing this wonderful thing um, with the spiritual unfolding, and it's so great. This past Sunday, I had an opportunity to speak um, at a church, as I will this coming Sunday. I will be in Akron, Ohio, and I'll be speaking at a different church, and I'm just equally excited about that. So, um, still working on this crazy website. I was, um, yesterday I was at, I went to a blogger meetup and at this bloggers meetup, it was all these people. And, and for some reason I thought I was going to learn all this stuff so I could go back and apply it to my new website that I'm setting up. And, um, and so I got, well, I got some ideas. It, it wasn't like it made me, um, made the work any, you know, any easier or, or any closer to completion. And so, um, with that, I'm just, you know, going to continue plugging away so that I'll have one location to put all my information. So whether it is Ustream, or it is um, the the recordings that we do here on ACMI Gather. I've got a plethora of stuff that I've done over the years from different places. I want to be able to pull in those audios. I've got TV shows that I've done. I want to be able to pull in that. And plus the writing I've done. So I, I want to put all this stuff, including my calendar, so you could see me out and about. I want to get all that stuff in one spot. And so um, with, to that end, I am working diligently towards that, so keep an eye out for it. I know I keep I keep warning you guys, and um, it still has yet to happen. Um, so so here we go, you guys. I am so excited because um, this past week, um, it, it, <sighs> okay. So um, this past week, I had a friend of mine. So I've got a, a new friend. I'm always collecting friends as I go. I love the way it works. You know, you, you, you meet new people and you get together for whatever reasons. And, um, you, you know, you get to have these awesome conversations about a number of things. And so, you know, this new friend is no different. Um, you know, I, I, I met him and we started talking and we started talking about a variety of things, but inevitably, you know, people ask you questions like, um, you know, what your favorite this or what your favorite that is. And, um, and so it was so interesting because, uh, when he, when he asked me the question about what my favorite movie was, I, I knew right away, I said to him, I said that um, my favorite, my absolute favorite movie is The Matrix. Um, okay, so here, I'm streaming, I'm typing this into my Facebook right now, streaming live on Ustream. So let me just put this in here. Um because I like for people to be able to watch me if they want to watch me too. So um, let me just put this in here while I'm talking to you guys. I know it's like I can't chew gum and, and type at the same time. So I've got to tell you what I'm typing and talk it through so I'll know what I'm doing. So control V. And, um, and then I'm going to post. And so, ah! okay, so here we go. Now that appears on my page so that, you know, that people know that I'm on, on now. Okay. So, um, so he asked me what my favorite movie was and without hesitation, I told him, oh, it's the matrix, you know, and, um, on the matrix, um, you know, he had not seen the matrix before. And so he, you know, he really had no clue what it was about. But then it seems as though just the other day, the Matrix comes on to the television. Um, I think it was Sunday night. And he calls me up and he says, the Matrix is on. Why don't you come over and watch? And, you know, I just didn't feel like going. But I was telling him, I was trying to set it up for him and to tell him what this Matrix would be about. And so what I said to him is, is I said, look at it with the perspective 
that this is the story of Jesus the Christ. I said, so so go into the movie letting go of all your preconceived notions about what it's about and the special effects and all this other stuff. And look at it from a spiritual standpoint. You know, I am into symbolism and people trying to understand things from a different perspective. So I wanted him to come in with the eye, with his eyes wide open. And, um, and I wanted him to see it in the perspective or from the perspective that it could be, um, Jesus the Christ that we are talking about. So he, you know, he hangs up the phone and a couple of hours later, you know, like tense hours for me, a couple of hours later, I get this call. And, um, you know, at first when he calls, there's this silence on the line, like, Okay. And then he says to me, he was like, now explain to me how you got Jesus out of that movie. And he started talking and he said to me, um, you know, as I was trying to say to him, I was like, you didn't see it, you know? <laughs> so he, as he started talking, he says to me, well, the movie seems so violent. I can't understand how you could have possibly thought that that had anything to do with the story of Jesus. So I, I kind of chuckled after a few minutes because at first I was stunned. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to respond to, to him saying that it was so violent, you know, I, I, you know, and so I sat there for a few minutes and, um, I had to chuckle because, you know, here's the thing. No matter what we're doing, no matter where we are, it's as if we take with us who we are into any situation. So there are certain things I realize that because I am who I am and I see the world as I do, that I don't even see or I don't even notice or I don't even take as being the way that other people see it. So, um, I remember seeing in Star Wars, in one of the Star Wars things, uh, the um, young Jedi in training said, you know, he said, Master, there's a disturbance in the Force. And um, the Master turns to him and says to him that he needed to stay present in the moment and focus in on what he was doing. Because your focus determines your reality. And for so many of us, we don't recognize or realize that our focus determines our reality. We're so caught up with seeing things. Um, how do I want to say it? We're so caught up in seeing things the way we're so used to seeing them that we never open up to the possibility that there is another way of seeing you guys, today, today is September 11th, and for many of you, for many of us, we go by with this idea that it is actually sep uh, September 11th, which is 9-11. Um, we, we go by and we totally forget about it unless we turn on our TVs or um, something else happens to remind us that there was a tragedy on this day. But even on September 11th and, and throughout other days, I notice that I don't have the mindset that says to me that something is wrong, that there is a disturbance in the force. Um, when I was looking and thinking about it from, and, and, and let me, um, because I want to talk about it in the way the Course in Miracles would deal with it. But let me let me talk about it like this for a few minutes. Um, so, so, so I was asking myself, you know, when I saw the Matrix, what did I see? There is so many times that we are looking at the world. And as we look at the world, we see the world from the world's perspective or through the world's eyes. But there is always another way of looking at it. There is a way of looking at it that sees beyond what is presented to your eye as it's presented. 
So I always think that it's a matter of consciousness how we see everything. So if you have fear-based thinking, you will see things to fear. If you have love thinking, then no matter what comes up, what you'll see is love. My brother just walked in the door, you guys. Um, and so I had to wave at him for those of you who are watching me. Um, but, but And when you have a, a, a mindset that says that people are dishonest or distrusting or or that people are largely a particular way, that's what you continue to see as long as that is your mindset. For most of us, we don't recognize that we can change our minds or we can see things a different way. Now, um, it's I, I keep saying it's interesting because I, I find all this stuff fascinating. So, um, I was thinking about one of my favorite um, biblical scriptures, and I don't know that it's my favorite. I shouldn't say it like that. I, I should say that it is one of the things that sticks out in my mind. You know how you can read a scripture and it seems like for years on end, that thing, that particular scripture or quote stays with you? Well, it was, you know, this one is no different. So I decided I'd pull out my old trusty Bible and I'd look up the scripture and share it with you guys. But now I also want to tell you that I did this uh, across the uh, across the board because um, I find it I find all this stuff just so so marvelous so marvelous darling. Okay, so um, let me see if I can find in in a uh, regular King James version of the Bible what it says, and then I'm going to read it to you out of the Lambda translation, and then I'll share with you out of the NIT or the Holy Spirit's um, interpretation on this. So um, this is what Jesus was saying. He was talking to um, the multitudes and to his disciples. And he says, you know, scribes, the scribes and Pharisees sit in, the, in Moses' seat. And therefore, so whatever they bid you observe, that observe and do. And do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. And then they bind heavy burdens and grievous born lay upon them men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move a finger to do all this. So he goes into this whole thing. You know, as I'm reading that, I'm thinking like, okay, I don't want to read that translation. That's the King James Version. I've got my NIT here that they, Dove and uh, Regina so lovingly sent me um, to interpret all this stuff. But now here's the other um, thing that I have here, and this is um, the Holy Bible, and this was translated by George Lamso, and this particular translation was not gone through, had not gone through all the other things, which most Bibles are, like even the, um, the, what do you call it, those newer Bibles, I forget what you call them, um, the updated version in the updated language, even those are translated from the King James Version to the current. This was um, translated straight out of the ancient Aramaic, which was the language of Jesus in that particular time. And so um, the translation is just slightly um, or different, and it gives different emphasis in different spots. And so I kind of love this book. When I first wanted to get this book, because I had found out that this book exists, and when I first went to order it, it was so funny because I went into this local, um, what do I want to call it? It's a Christian bookstore. I went into a local Christian bookstore and I asked if they had this Lamza translation. And the lady, she goes and she looks on the shelf and they didn't have it. And so then she looks in the computer and then she goes someplace else. And here she comes out and she says to me, well, you know, we don't carry that particular Bible, and we don't recommend that Bible. Um, we recommend that you get it. And I'm, like, standing there, and I'm thinking, like, I can't ask you what you recommended. Just, you know, um, can you order it for me? And so now I have this particular one. So in that same verse, um, and I'll just tell you guys what I'm trying to get to. It says, Then Jesus spoke to the people, saying to his disciples, Say unto them, the scribes and Pharisees, sit in the chair of Moses, and therefore, whatever they tell you to obey, obey and do it. 
for do not do according to for but do not do according to their works for they say and do not you know how your parents used to say um, do as I say and not as I do there you go and they bind heavy burdens and put them on men's shoulders but they themselves are not willing to touch them even with their fingers so they'll direct you to do something but wouldn't do it themselves wouldn't touch it okay and all their works they do just to be seen by men for they widen the fringes of their garments and lengthen the ends of their robes and they like the chief places at the feast and the front seats in the synagogues and the greetings in the streets and to be called men and to be called by men rabbi but you should not call you should not be called rabbi for you uh, for one is your master and all else are brethren call one call no one on earth father for one is your father and he is in heaven nor be called leaders for one is your leader the Christ mm. um, but he who is greatest among you let him be your servant now it's interesting because as I was reading that and 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 what came to me as I was going through this thing about how we see the world and our choices and our focus and all that stuff I was thinking to myself that a lot of times what we do is is we focus on things that actually, you know, have no power. They make no difference. And and when I get to this in the the course, it it says it also so clearly. You know, we we want to we have all these people that want to prop themselves up and and make it seem like you need to focus on particular things. They want to tell you how to think, how to talk, how to walk. Oh, let me get to this NIT version. Okay, so um, so when I get to and and I open up this particular book, um, you know, I only highlighted certain things that I'll read out of, to you out of here because it kind of it kind of circles back on the same thing as it goes through, but it's so rich. I have already told you it says, and this is in in the same chapter of Matthew. I have already told you that you are free to give what is Caesar's what is Caesar's to Caesar this means you are free to live in the world and do as you need do until no or while you live in the world do not feel guilty for paying taxes obeying laws raising children or for doing any of the things that the world requires but do not get lost in those things so um, the world it says is not a distraction and it distracts you the world is a distraction but it distracts you from heaven okay so it, that's what it says I mean I, I'm, I'm kind of skipping over words don't have on my glasses as you can see if you're watching me um, if you seek the glory of men you are choosing to be bound to this world for men are of the world there are no men in heaven there is only one so um so it becomes this thing of just trying to figure out um how you want to see things how you want to see the world all of those things and so if you're if you are basically focused on these things like if you're focused on watching um and being concerned about all the stuff of the world then you're really focusing in on the wrong thing so when I started thinking about the ways that I see things I'm not looking for the 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 victimhood I'm not looking from a victim perspective I'm not looking to see the the, the fighting and the violence I'm looking and I'm seeing something different I'm seeing the message and hearing the message and totally miss the idea that there was violence there and so often I think we get caught up in seeing things from from the perspective that we bring to them so as I was like thinking about this I was like oh my gosh this is so rich so in um, and I'll tell you why I got all this stuff it was because I was reading in the Course in Miracles again I love this book can I tell you again how much I love this book 
This is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The aim of the course is not to teach the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing your blocks to your awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposites. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. I love it, love it, love it. So as I was reading this, I, it was saying to me, I, I read this in here, it says conflict must be between two forces. It cannot exist. It cannot exist between one power and nothingness. There is nothing you can attack that is not a part of you. And by attacking it, you make two illusions of yourself in conflict with each other. So I kept thinking to myself, like, okay, so now if in heaven, it said, if in heaven there is only one, there are no such thing as men, there is only one, and if we're coming from a perspective or bringing the, to this a perspective of oneness, oneness is about, not about who sits in, you know, on the high dais and who gets all the attention, who's called the leader, who's called the rabbi, that's not oneness. Right. If we're operating in oneness, oneness says that we all participate in this thing together. And so there is really nothing to war up against. But we have the perception that there are things that are battling us or opposing us. So if nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists, so what you do is, is we try to make and out picture things, make them real, give them power as if they're real. And then, you know, we want to like, like have imaginary fight, but one between the other. And it makes no sense. I, I hope I'm making sense. Um, but 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 this is the kind of thing that we do. It's kind of like we have this idea that there are opposites. You know, like there is opposition. We want to make it, and, and in the course it says that we have this illusion that we could possibly attack God. So if we know that God is like this one power, one presence in which we live, move, and have our being, if we know this, then to perceive us as having an enemy out there means that now we must project there to be something else. Now, here's the thing. I don't like when um, we try to make things be what they're not. Okay, and let me explain what I mean. The introduction says this is a required course, only the time you take it is voluntary, right? Okay, so the Course says that, which means that everybody, every conscious being must go through the Course. Now, you may not call it a Course in Miracles when you're going through it. You may simply call it life because life is what we have to grow through. Life is what happens to you in between this birth, you know, of our bodies and the death of our bodies. It is this thing called life. Life is a Course. Life teaches you things. Life happens in incremental steps. Now, some of us, we, you know, some people, they say that we will learn. We choose through pleasure or through pain, but we will learn. So some of us go out there and attack our lessons and say, okay, this is the lesson I want to learn. I want to learn about truth. I want to learn what's real. I want to learn, learn what, you know, what love is. I want to learn that there's only one of us here. You know, I want to learn about forgiveness. I want to learn about peace. I want to learn about, you know, being a, 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 a messenger of God. I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to learn, you know. So some people want to learn the lessons and they go out there and search for it. Whether you search for the lesson or not, life happens and life is teaching you something. And so whether you want to learn it or not, it's still the course is still going to be presented to you. Like it or not, that's just the way it is. I'm sorry. Okay. So now if that is the case, and now what we are learning here is, is that there is this thing called oneness, this one that we all participate in. If you are now battling up against something, it's because you perceive there to be something that battle there is to battle against. So 
you know, back in chapter six, he says that whenever we feel attacked, I do believe that's what it says, because I'm not I'm not going to flip back to the page. But whenever we feel attacked is because we have first perceived ourselves as vulnerable and that there is something out there that could possibly attack us. But when you recognize that there is nothing else out there that attacks us, you don't see anything. So so I started thinking about that. I was like, wow, well, how does that how does that play out in in regular life? I mean, how does it play out from the perspective or the vision that I have here? So what I was thinking and, and I got the clear picture, like some people think that the opposite of light is dark or the opposite of day is night. And and we have these things that like it, as if there would be a war or a competition between the two. I mean, if we tried to make them as if they were separate, you know, does it make them separate? I mean, there is no battle between dark and light. Darkness simply just disappears when light is present. So if we want to make it seem because we've got that kind of consciousness that that sees competition or that sees opposites or or that sees a struggle or a battle, if we have that kind of consciousness, then that's what we'll perceive because that's where we are in our heads. But in truth, there is no battle. There is nothing outside of you to battle. So imagine this. We also have this perception in our, in our heads that there is the good Sandra over here, and then there's the evil Sandra or the bad Sandra over here, and those two will, you know, compete and battle against each other. If I make them real, I can say, oh, there's a battle. But you know, it says that there's a, if a house is divided up against itself, it cannot stand. That, there is no battle. There is nothing but oneness. There is nothing but love. So when we create these things, when we outpicture these things, when we try to make there be an opposite, then what we get is, is the result of our thinking. And our thinking may think this thing, but it does not then in turn make it real. It makes it what you think and what you put out there. But you can now then change your mind. Because as he told me about this, you know, oh, I see all this violence in there. I'm thinking like, what violence? What violence? I saw no violence. I mean, but, but but then I guess as I started thinking about it, I said to him, I was like, oh, I saw the shells falling. I saw, you know, I saw bullets, but, but, but in my mind, there wasn't any violence. I mean, in my mind, it was none of them were real. It was all a dream they were having, and if they are safely somewhere in a pod waiting to be set free, then how could there possibly be violence in there? So, um, so there is nothing you could attack that is not part of you, is what the Course says. And by attacking it, you make two illusions of yourself in conflict with each other. I have this, I have a brother, my brother is, uh, I got, I got some sharp brothers, you know, I love my brothers, but I have, um, I have this one particular brother and he's so funny when he was, um, when he was younger, when he was a kid, he would take things and he would just like start swinging them in the air, you know, and he would just swing them. And I've seen other, you know, people do that, but he swing them and you want to know and you ask him, what is he looking at when he's swinging in the air? And he was like, it's, you know, it's, it's a race going on. And in his mind, he sees things racing, you know, as they're going back and forth. Now, he would hate it if I told you this now, but, but he would see these things racing. But in reality, there was only the one thing that was there. And it just because of the swiftness of how fast he swung it, it made it look like there were several things stampeding and maybe racing up against each other. I have no clue. But but he made it real. He made it real and then wanted to make it seem like there was really a race going on. That's what we do in our minds. We make that thing real. We then, you know, because we have the perception that we're separate. 
we then think that there is something to battle up against and something to compete with. And in reality, there is not. And this occurs um, whenever you look on anything that God created with anything but love. Right? Conflict is fearful, for it is the birth of fear. Yet what is born is of nothingness cannot win reality through battle. Let me read that again. Yet what is born of nothingness cannot win reality through battle. What is born of nothingness cannot win reality through battle. So, um... Further down, let me let me go back to this Lamza translation because I want to go back to this for a second because I, I thought, and I love this, I love this, I love this. Um, further down in the translation, did I close the book on what I was reading? I mean, I just closed the book like I was done with it all together, didn't I? Um, yeah, I did, so I lost my page. Um, so further down in the translation and I don't know why I'm reading this because I really know what I'm trying to say to you um, but but for some reason I just keep thinking it's so rich when I read it out of this like richer than what I'm saying and so um, he says woe to you scribes and Pharisees this is Jesus talking in the new translation Matthew chapter 23 and um, I'm reading now verses um, maybe 24, 25, 26, I don't know. O oh, blind guides who strain at the gnats and swallow camels, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You clean the outside of a cup and of the plate, but inside is full of extortion and iniquity. Blind Pharisees, clean first the inside of the cup and of the plate, so that your outside will also be clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like the tombs painted white, which look all beautiful from the outside, but inside are full of dead bones and all kinds of corruptions. Even so, from the outside you appear to men to be righteous, but from within you are full of iniquity and hypocrisy. You know, and, and that, isn't that so true? I mean, isn't it so true? It's, it's so funny because um, when, when you think about it, um, I, there was this woman um, that I knew and you know clean you talk about getting clean as we used to say um, you know she put on her smell good and she put on her clothes and look all good and all of this other stuff Ooh, but you talking about a toxic I, I, I'm sorry I, I use that term sometime I, I shouldn't say it like that but but I, I use the term toxic waste dump um, and and I, I have a friend of mine, and I'm embarrassed to say this because I'm always on his back about it. I mean, he he drinks and he smokes and he does all kind of stuff that is just, to me, just toxic. He just puts toxins in his system and is just a toxic person. I mean, just toxic toxicity on top of toxicity and um but yet then he cleans up on the outside and it becomes this thing but but you know on the inside you've got all this other stuff going on it's like clean out the inside you know when they say that beauty is only skin deep that's because you know it it, it is only skin deep if you're not taking care of what's inside if you're not taking care of your mental house if you're not taking care of your health if you're not putting healthy things in then it becomes this thing like that those tombs, you know, that the you know, they build up these beautiful tombs to to people who are dead and gone. And and you know, the tombs from the outside look so beautiful and ornate, but really they're housing dead bones and housing rotten flesh. And that's how our lives are sometimes. I thought that was a great example that Jesus used in Matthew. And so um so clean up the inside and the outside will also be clean as well. And I think we have to be conscious of that all the time about what it is that we're doing and, and what it is that we're saying. Because otherwise it's just a front. You know, I don't like to, um, there is this thing um, I was thinking about. I like it when we own where we are. 
You know, when we're truthful enough to own where we are in a particular life, um, because what happens is, is a lot of times we're busy going around telling people, you know, oh, this is not real. Your body is not real. And, and we haven't had that. I'll, I'll tell you guys that there is, there is an experience, a revelation, a knowing that we get through doing the work of the Course in Miracles. It's not something that we're just required to say because it's what the book says or because we think it's the right thing to say. There is an experience that goes along with the learning and with the teaching. And until you've had the experience, you're just doing lip service. What needs to happen is, is to get it, you have to have the real experience of realizing and recognizing that all of this stuff is not real. So, so it becomes this thing of, you know, like, like, so for me, when I had my, when I had this wonderfully clear moment, this wonderfully clear revelation, it was, you know, it was so clear to me and I really got it. I really got it. But it wasn't as if I needed to now go and tell somebody else, you know, that it is this way. And so you need to see it this way. I'm, I'm like, you know, it's funny because I'm like my grandmother used to be. My grandmother used to have this tendency to say, girl, just keep on living. You know, just keep on living because life teaches us. Life teaches us the lessons that we need to know. And so, you know, it becomes this thing about authentically owning where we are in the moment rather than trying to project onto something. And until you get it, you don't get it. And that's okay. Because remember, this is a required course. All of us have to take it. You can't get out of this, you know, and, and, and it, it may take you a while. I don't want to make it sound like the course or any of this stuff is instantaneous. Some people will need to, to study and concentrate on it on a daily basis and, and you know, and, 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 you know, will need to memorize things. And then there'll be other people who, when they say it, they'll get it or they'll have a wonderful remembrance of something that was shown to them throughout their lifetime that says, ah, this is the truth. You know, it's something will just resonate with you. We don't have to put up and, and make all these fronts and try to make it seem like we're something in some place that we're not. There's something wonderful about just coming and just being natural. I mean, and just owning where you are. So, when I think about this thing about perception, you know, and and how we perceive things, nothing is, you know, this stuff, we, we say that truth is true and nothing else is true but truth, right? And then we wonder, how do you determine what's true? And is it because it's eternal? Well, you know, for a lot of people, they don't know what eternal is. You know, they don't know where eternality begins and where it ends. And some of you will say, well, if it's flesh or if it passes out of this world, it's not eternal. But but since they don't have the perception of themselves as being eternal, they don't really know. But 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 you see, it's so funny because sometimes it's like all about, you know, where is it that we focus in at? What is it that I desire to see? If I desire to see love, no matter what you do to me, what I'm going to look for and what I'm going to hear is the love that is present because I know that it's always present. So if I'm looking at it and I'm saying that, you know, I'm saying that, wow, I see, you know, I see the towers as they get hit by the planes. I remember standing in my house and watching the TV in disbelief and thinking like, wow, I see those towers getting hit. And even as I saw the towers getting hit, I remember holding to the idea that my grandmother used to say, everything that happens happens for the good for those that love the Lord. My grandmother had that old-fashioned kind of religion. 
So what I what I chose to believe was it's only love is real. And so what I asked in the moment is, God, show me the love. I want to see love. I want to see love. I want to see love. And as I focused in on that and I kept thinking, all I want to see is the love, I definitely got a download of how I saw love in that situation. And so a lot of times when I look at the world, no matter what I'm looking at, the only thing that my mind cues into is the love. I may see bullets flying. I may see all of this other stuff going on. I I probably saw it when I was looking at that movie. But really the only thing I saw was the love. Because I chose to focus in on that. So it's funny. Um you know when when I when I thought about that, I was thinking about the movie. Um I don't even know what the movie was. It it said um it said I see dead people. You know? I see dead people. That's what they said in the movie. I forget what the name of that movie was, um, right offhand. Um, but but when he when he was saying it, I see dead people, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking like, you know, people see things that aren't in flesh or aren't solidified all the time. We see spirits. We you know we feel things that we have no explanation for. Those things are around us. But where are you looking and what are you focusing on? You know? And so, oh, the sixth sense. Thank you. <laughs> Bless your heart. Is that Lynn? Hey, I didn't even know that was you. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> I love that movie too. So, so it, it becomes this thing of what are we focused on? What are your eyes? What are you gazing at? What are you looking at? And and is it possible? It, it It is absolutely possible. But is it possible that you can change around what you want to see and say that this is what you're going to see, this is what you want to see, and focus in on that? So when it talks about, when the Course talks about forgiveness, it becomes a point in time, not where you're looking at like things like you have something to forgive, but to recognize that you can look past that and see that it never happened in the first place. And if it did happen, it didn't happen for something bad to happen to you, but it happened for your own good and for your own growth. And so that brought you to a new revelation or a new place in your understanding to see beyond what is present to the truth of your being to the truth of what God is I love that I love that I love that okay so um she said I love the movie on my phone internet popped up on me oh oh the internet pooped out on you is that what happened oh my god I had to go to the phone to hear Sandra bless your heart sweetie um, you know what? It, it's funny because I, I wonder if um, Mercury has gone retrograde or something because so many of us have been having problems with these communication mediums that we use. Um, and so I don't know if, if, if it's something out there in the ethers or if it is whatever. But um, but yeah, it, it, it seems like there's something going on. But I'm given that no power because all I see is just is love and communication is so divine because a lot of times we think that we need all these things to communicate with but my prayer group um that um that i had one of the things we used to do was we used to practice coming to each other um at odd hours you know and knowing that we could communicate with each other through spirit through consciousness through our minds because we were so connected and so when we go into our heart space and connect heart to heart with somebody else, we we do, you know, there is nothing that is held back. And 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 these mediums that we use for, you know, for communication is just pale in comparison to what we're really capable of. So um so for me, what I try to do is relinquish this this body ego perception and just come just fully to any experience knowing 
um, that, you know, that, that it's there for my good. And as long as I'm open to it, I'll learn what I need to learn. Open flower. Yeah, I was wondering about mercury going retrograde yeah I, i'm wondering about that too i have to check it and and you guys while i have you here i guess i'll say to you too um there's this neat little website that i found that um that on astrology i think it's called cafeastrology.com and um so cafeastrology.com if you go there they've got some neat little things in there that you can get for free big things too um but I think it'll give you all your transits and everything um, probably for free. And, and then it'll probably let us know if there is something going on in the ethers that's causing us not to be able to um, make these connections. It's so funny um, how those things happen. And um, yeah, and then it just everything just corrects itself. And so I just always um, am anticipating and perceiving the correction. Uh, so cafeastrology.com thank you yes that is that would be it um i do believe that's it <laughs> but i'm pretty sure that's it okay so um so I, you know so for me i didn't really get it until i got it and when i got it i finally got it and i understood it on a whole nother level and i love that understanding that i got um, because it became this thing that, um, y you know, books and, and people and everything, they can tell you stuff all day long, but until you really experience it for yourself, I mean, really get it for yourself, it, you don't get it. I mean, it, you know, until you get it. And so, so that's the beauty in it. And, and when you ask for the revelation, those revelations do come and they may not come immediately because maybe sometimes the framework is not there for us to understand it. But when it comes, you'll understand it and you'll get it. Um, I remember when um, I used to get these. I love doing my meditations. You know, I love to sit in meditation. And and sometimes when I go into um, I go into my meditation, it's like I'm I'm sitting there and the world just disappears. I mean, it's like the disappearance of the universe. The, the world simply just disappears. And then all of a sudden, when you come back, it's like, you know, you get that in breath and it's like, wow, where did I go? And a lot of times I don't remember all of what happened immediately, but it's, it, it's as if the revelations or the things that I experienced while I was gone come back to me in increments. I mean, and, and they just come back. And, and so I feel so awesomely blessed. When we don't tell our truth, when we don't speak our truth to where we are, it seems somehow disingenuous to sit there and tell somebody, oh, this is how it's supposed to be, if we haven't necessarily experienced it. And so I'm always at this um, this juncture of saying, okay, this is where I'm at. And my experience may not be your experience. I was listening to Cheryl this past weekend, and it was so great because she was talking about her chosen teacher, who was Regina, and how Regina was in one space and she was in another. And she was saying to you guys and, and to me, you know, you don't have to be where somebody is. You can do it the way and spirit reveals itself to you as it should. And that's your lesson. It's your journey. And, and there's a reason why all of us are individuals and, um, and come to this with the, you know, a different take on it. Not that we're truly separate, but because, you know, there is a, this lensing, this lensing called Sandra, this point, this, this God consciousness that flows through this being called Sandra is supposed to talk to you from Sandra's perspective because Sandra's perspective is totally different from, you know, from, from somebody else's. And there is, that doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just simply means that it's different and it's what it's supposed to be. So I appreciate when everybody brings their perceptions and brings what, what it is that they learn to um, ACMI gather. And as I listen to it, whether I'm on Pal Talk or not, when I'm listening to it, it's just such a richness there for me. Um, so going right back to in a, um, NTI, um, NTI uh, and, and for those of you um, who are on Ustream with me, um, NTI, the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament. Um, 
is uh, one of the books that is uh, it was written by Regina it says foundation for the Holy Spirit on here um, but um, it's one of those you can get through um, I guess you could go to Regina's site and that'd have to give you that um, particular website on here but if you guys are interested um, and you're not on pal talk then just send me a message on um, Facebook and I can get you the information on how to get this book it is such a rich book and um, if you're looking for different ways of viewing the scripture um, a different interpretation of what it says and that's not you know taking away from anything it says but just giving you a different glimpse of how um, the Holy Spirit reveals itself through the words and teachings of Jesus you know to somebody else and um, this is a rich little book I love it I love it I love it so in here she says in that um, same chapter of Matthew she says listen to me you fool yourself when you listen to the purpose of the world for you tell yourself that things are important when they are not you know we have the perception that what we think is important is important but it's really not do you um, do what you must do within the world but let me guide you in determining what you must do. So, so um, you know, as as I'm thinking about that, and as I was saying to him, I didn't see any violence, um, or I didn't have a perception of there being violence in that particular movie. It wasn't where my mind was focused in on. It was partly not just because I'd read The Course in Miracles, but the other thing is just, you know, it's like, you know what, what what's really important I mean is is the journey important Jesus said Jesus said to this end I was born so he was born for a particular purpose to accomplish a tip particular goal that goal included in it you know and we like to make it sound like you know okay Jesus was a man of peace and love yeah but there was a very you know the, the times that he was living in, he had to be crucified in order for him to you know for for the resurrection to occur for all of this stuff to occur there had to be some violence involved and so rather than focus in on um, on those things it's like okay what is the real purpose behind things and so let us be um, let us be conscious and aware of the purpose the purpose for what we're here for um, the purpose of what any of this for, is for is to show us clearly who we are to, to, to push us back, I mean, not to push us back, but to, to, to reflect back on who we are and to know that, you know, that there is this oneness, that we have never been separated from God, we've never been separated from each other, that all of this is love, and that there is nothing else. And so, you know, it, as we look at it from that perspective, then we lose all of our judgments about, you know, you know, this thing about this this right and wrong or good and bad or light and dark and all this stuff all these things that we make out here you know we lose our perspective on that and then we turn inward and see what it's really about no Jesus didn't pull any punches and so so we you know we we turn back in and we check out what it's really all about you know what's in this for me what am I supposed to get out of it um, what am I supposed to do here how does love want me to think how does you know how how am I perceiving all of this so so when we look through eyes of love when we look through eyes of peace when we look through and have the vision of cooperation what we get and what we see is more of that you know we we stop looking for ways in which you know somebody else is wrong and this person is right and we start to look at how we are one where we come together how things are right how things are good how God is operating in all and through all and as all so you know as I started thinking about all this stuff that I wanted to come in and talk about I mean it, it, it's such a richness you know of information once we get beyond these these ideas of right and wrong the, um, I, I think it was um, Romy why do you say that Rumi Romy Rami Rami um, Rumi, I I don't know, whatever. I, I'm not gonna put a lot of time into it. But he said, 
beyond the place of right and wrong, out beyond perceptions of right and wrong is a field. And he said, meet me there. I love that perception. That whole thing about Rumi. Is that how you say it? Rumi. Thank you, darling. I, I, somebody is always on Pal Talk here that willing to help out. Um, so, so as as we move out of this idea, out of our, out of these perceptions, out of this, you know, this conflict, this this division thing, as we move out beyond that, there is a field of just oneness. That is the truth. I mean, you know, if you want to recognize where truth is, truth is out there, you know, in that oneness, in that stillness, in that, that quiet place where everything is perfect, everything is one. That's the place where we can meet up. And when we meet there, then we'll have really something to share. You guys, I think I'm um I'm I'm just about out of time. But let me say this real quick and before I go, because um I posted a video a, a snippet of a video on my um Facebook page when I spoke this past Sunday. I talked about um and, and I love doing this because you know I love all kinds of stuff. I just love learning. I love all this stuff. So um there's this this field of study called behaviorism and I had been watching all these documentaries about fear and it said that the main motivating force of people is not love but rather fear and so if you can predict behavior then you can basically control behavior so one of the things they started doing was saying hey we can predict how people respond to fear so then if we can re predict how they respond to fear then we can control them based on that fear and so I did a whole um, Sunday sermon on this idea of control. And so that a piece, a snippet of that is on my Facebook page. And people started having a dialogue about um, whether or not religion is another system, or just another system of control. And the funny thing is, is, I, is, is that by and large, I don't disagree with them when we're talking about um, organized religion as a whole but the wonderful thing about coming to the course is is that the course is this way of setting us free and um, and so when people ask me questions about um, about what I'm teaching and what I'm doing and how does it differ it's because we don't have that fear of looking at it and saying that um, that somebody is trying to control us by by religion and fear and all that stuff but really, the Course in Miracles is here to set us free. So, um, uh, you know, I love you guys, and um, I miss doing this. I, I wish I was doing this every day, but at some point, I'm sure I will be. So, um, I totally appreciate it, Lynn. I love you too. Um, you're so wonderful. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who listens and those of you who watch. I appreciate you. So I'm going to um, let go of the mic now, just saying that I love you and um, I will see you here again, same time, same place next week, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Love you. Bye. All right. And um, so I just cut off my pal talk interview, and um, I don't want to say. Um, interview but you know the radio show I do so um, yeah okay so um, so I'm, I'm gonna go okay you guys thank you love you <laughs>